Greetings to you from Emmanuel Lutheran Church of Plainview, Minnesota. I am Pastor Phil Augustine, leading you in this video service of the Word for the fifth Sunday after the Epiphany for February 7th of 2021. We made it through January, and February came, and it got cold. Well, at least we know we don't have an extra month of that to endure. We know God will deliver us from this as well. Uh, we... Uh, had a time to, to kind of see the uh, organ work uh, update uh, for you as far as our video ministry goes. The, uh, we will continue to use the piano for uh, several weeks here yet, or at least a few weeks, uh, before the uh, console work is done. So all the pipes uh, for the new instrument have been installed, and uh, we've got some uh, fairly impressive ones uh, on the outside that should really uh, beef up the, uh, the bass sound uh, that uh, was there in our old instrument but will be much more uh, evident uh, with our new one. Uh, new to us anyway, not, not a brand new one by any means. So we're thankful for the gifts of, of uh, financial stewardship that allowed this instrument to come here and the gifts of our, our organ builder, uh, Mr. Roland Rutz. Uh, from right here in Minnesota, uh, who uh, has been diligently working on this for, for many weeks now, uh, here and there, uh, and uh, has a little bit more work to do yet on the, the keyboard aspect, the count, what we call the console, uh, which sits up in the, the balcony uh, for the organist to actually play on. All right, that aside, uh, we hear the gifts of God today uh, through word and song, and we begin with our opening hymn, the selected three stanzas of Come Unto Me Ye Weary. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We follow divine service setting one for our opening liturgy today. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. 
But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We hear these verses of the introit for this fifth Sunday after the Epiphany from Psalm 13. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Light up my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest my enemy say, I have prevailed over him. Lest my foes rejoice, because I am shaken. But I have trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will sing to the Lord, because he has dealt bountifully with me. Let us pray. O Lord, keep your family, the church, continually in the true faith, that relying on the hope of your heavenly grace, we may ever be defended by your mighty power. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for this fifth Sunday after the Epiphany is from Isaiah chapter 40, beginning at verse 21. Do you not know? Do you not hear? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to dwell in, who brings princes to nothing and makes the rulers of the earth as emptiness. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows on them and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me that I should be like him, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their host by number, calling them all by name, by the greatness of his might, and because he is strong in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youths shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles, they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is the word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. The epistle reading continues through 1 Corinthians. Uh, we are in chapter 9, beginning at verse 16 today. Uh, Paul's emphasis, uh, and we'll pick up on that a little bit in the sermon, uh, is on the, the preaching of the gospel and the, the recognition of those who are, are, need to hear it in different ways, in different places, and, but yet it's still all about the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. St. Paul writes, If I preach the gospel, that gives me no ground for boasting, for necessity is laid upon me. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. Or if I do this of my own will, I have a reward, but not of my own will. I am still entrusted with a stewardship. What then is my reward? That in my preaching I may present the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. For though I am free from all, I have made myself a servant to all, that I might win more of them. To the Jews I became as a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the law I became as one under the law, though not being myself under the law, that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law I, might, I became as one outside the law, not being outside the law of God, but under the law of Christ that I might win those outside the law. To the weak I became weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that by all means I might save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, that I may share, that I may share with them in its blessings. Do you not know that in a race all the runners compete, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable one. So I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air. But I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest after preaching to others I myself should be disqualified. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Immediately Jesus left the synagogue and entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law lay ill with a fever. And immediately they told him about her. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. And the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown they brought to him all who were sick or oppressed by demons. And the whole city was gathered together at the door. And he healed many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. And rising very early in the morning, while it was still dark, he departed and went out to a desolate place, and there he prayed. And Simon and those who were with him searched for him, and they found him and said to him, Everyone is looking for you. And he said to them, Let us go on to the next towns, that I may preach there also, for that is why I came out. And he went throughout all Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and casting out demons. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our faith by the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven 
and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We join in our sermon hymn, selected verses of Hail to the Lord's Anointed, hymn 398. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Text before us, <clears throat> excuse me, is the, the gospel reading from St. Mark, the first chapter, uh, a continuation of what we heard uh, from Mark's gospel last week. Uh, with the, the, the idea, the theme today of what are we to make of Jesus? We hear these words that set our focus for today. And Jesus said to them, let us go on to the next towns that I may preach there also, for that is why I came out. And he went throughout all Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and casting out demons. Thus far God's word. Growing up, different times, different places, uh, perhaps you also heard or said the same phrase, what do you make of it? You know, it's a question I've asked, heard hundreds of times probably. Sometimes it's in regards to something that we're, we're observing, that we're looking at, trying to, to make sense of something. Maybe it's a, a piece of artwork or a sculpture and sometimes it's this abstract art kind of thing or a painting, something that just defies explanation. What do you make of it? I have a very logical, mathematical mind. And I often miss the message <laughs> of the artwork. It just isn't apparent to me. I don't see the symbolism, I don't see the contrasts that other people that, whose brains work on the other side of the brain can pick up on so much more easily. Jesus was kind of a mystery to his disciples and the people of Galilee too. 
What do you make of him? I'm sure people were asking that. With the crowds and the religious establishment, that's what Mark is portraying of Jesus in these opening chapters. Jesus has just come from the synagogue where he cast out an unclean spirit from a man who was there in the synagogue with them. And those gathered were astonished. Who is this, they asked. He's teaching with authority, even commands demons, and they obey him. Then he's on to Simon Peter's house, where his mother-in-law is ill. And Jesus calls out the sickness, as if he were calling out a demon. And the sickness leaves her. Then the whole city gets involved, bringing their sick and their demon-possessed to Jesus. And he seemingly takes care of them all. What are we to make of Jesus? This is an incredible thing that is going on. Miracles and mighty deeds can get us thinking of Jesus in great and mighty ways, but they also can lead us to think of Jesus in ways that he does not want us to do. He has come to be one of us in order to take on our sicknesses and our sorrows as prophesied in Isaiah chapter 53. He is our sickness bearer to be sure, but he has a much higher purpose, a much higher aim than just being a miracle man and a crowd pleaser, a sickness bearer. He's not just a healer, a social leader, teacher extraordinaire, or a candidate for a worldly kingdom. He didn't come to be the source of myths and legends, like so many false gods in our day and over the centuries that we've heard. But sadly, that's what the world makes of him today, just the source of myths and legends. So what do we make of Jesus? Is he your go-to guy when times are tough? Certainly. But is he far from your thoughts and prayers when life is good? When there's money in your pocket? When your health is good? When the demons of the world and their lust for power and control aren't having their way with you? At least not today. How about during this pandemic? Today's reflection is kind of upon our worship life. Is online church now your, your go-to? Even if you're able to be in person. But your flesh makes the excuse, oh, you know what? This is so much better, so much easier. We'll just do church like this today. Now, for those that are sick, and ironically, uh, it's the coldest weekend of the year uh, so far. And there is a risk of being out and about in the cold for some people. And so perhaps you are one that is watching here today and saying, you know, I just don't know about being out in this cold today. Maybe we'll just watch over the internet or later this week online or with TV or online. And I'm not trying to put an unnecessary guilt trip on you, but we do know that our flesh is weak. We do know that we tend to take the easy way out rather than doing what we know is right. Perhaps the, the shortened service is what you now look forward to because, well, we don't do all that liturgy or we don't do all that singing. Has that become more important than what 
all of that comes to bear, which is nothing but Christ for you. Do you treasure the shortened time, the shortened service, over what you are given to hear, to speak, to sing of in the service? Rather than spending, you desire the shortened service rather than spending some quality time in God's presence with the gifts that he comes to bring through your pastor in word and sacrament. Again, not trying to lay an unnecessary guilt trip on those that are being safer at home. But it's all got a balance. It's all got to play out in a way that honors God and puts Him first in your life. Hear then the preaching of Jesus, which proclaims the truth about Himself and us. Jesus says, the time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Hear him proclaim that the kingdom of God has become a reality. Indeed, it's enfleshed in him. And he continues to bring that to a hurting, sick, demon-possessed world. Hear his call for faith and trust in him that sees our sins. We can't know Jesus as he wants to be known unless we know and see in ourselves as he sees us, as helpless, needy, greedy, guilty people. The good news is, is that Jesus is the one we need and he comes to redeem us in spite of who we are as sinners. He is the one sent to fulfill all righteousness and bring God's kingdom to the hurting, to the lost, to the prideful and the arrogant alike. To those who need, who realize their need for a savior. We know what to make of Jesus. We see him and his miracles and come to know that Jesus isn't doing this to just put on a show. Rather, Jesus is pointing us heavenward to our Father in heaven who cares for us, who loves us, that he sent his Son, who has mercy upon us all, even through our wretchedness. Our Father who desires to have his kingdom and us in that kingdom that lasts forever. When Jesus went missing that day, that next day after healing so many, for he had risen early to find a quiet place to pray, Simon got together a search party and they looked for Jesus. They found him and said to him, everyone is looking for you. They wanted Jesus to come back and to continue the show, if you will, continue healing people. That's what they had made of Jesus. But Jesus has a different plan, a different purpose. He knows that this ministry can't just be contained here, but it needs to go, to go out. So he says to to Simon Peter and the others, let us go on to the next towns that I may preach there also, for that is why I came out. And indeed, St. Paul takes this to heart from our epistle lesson. That unless he preaches the gospel, unless he goes and delivers the gifts of God, what good is he? When the time was right, Jesus knows that his journey of going from town to town, village to village, people to people, is going to come to an end. His travels will end in Jerusalem so that he can give himself up as a sacrifice for all of mankind on the cross. Until that time, the main purpose of his ministry 
is preaching and teaching that delivers the kingdom of God. The healing and the other miracles were a sign of his authority that the kingdom of God has come, but they were not the main mission. Preaching the truth, preaching law that condemns us of sin and the forgiveness that we will find in Christ. This is the kingdom of God that he was to deliver. For as awesome as it was that Jesus went about healing people, it's his preaching that delivers the kingdom to them. Jesus could have gone about giving away free food, healing the sick, even raising the dead. But if all of that happened apart from the preaching of the word, the kingdom of God doesn't really come to a soul. Instead, God the Holy Spirit has promised to work through the Word of God, through preaching and teaching, the hearing of the Word. It is as the Holy Spirit said through the, the Apostle Paul, faith comes from hearing and hearing through the Word of Christ. Today's reading from the Gospel ended with these words, that Jesus went throughout all Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and casting out demons. With his preaching, he was bringing the kingdom of God and driving away evil. That's what the word does. It brings about forgiveness, life, and salvation to those places. And now, almost 2,000 years after this, the events of, in today's gospel, Jesus is still doing these things. He's still preaching and teaching giving life and forgiveness and salvation through his word and the preaching of that word. Even though Jesus long ascended into heaven, this ministry of his continues. He's just entrusted it to his church and especially to those pastors within that church. Before he ascended into heaven, Jesus appeared before his disciples and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead and that repentance and forgiveness, the forgiveness of sins be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. This is part of this great commission that Jesus gives to his disciples to go into all the world and make disciples of all nations through baptism and teaching. The miracles of faith that happen among us today. Jesus still gives the forgiveness that leads to eternal life because he is risen from the dead. He has opened heaven's gates. We already have this gift of eternal life by faith if we only see it dimly until the day when he comes back when we will see it fully and brightly in his glory. His healing hand still reaches out to us. And sometimes even miraculously it seems. But just as the preaching of the word goes forth through the means of the church, so the healing hand goes through the means of the medical arts. Through doctors and nurses and medical facilities. And these are blessings that still testify to the one who has come not just to heal your body, but also to revive and forgive your soul. So what do we make of Jesus? See that all the signs, that all he does are, are signs of his authority in heaven and on earth and points us to the new heaven and the new earth where we will be free of all sickness and sorrow. But more important than the signs, we are to listen to his word and trust that what he has done for you, for me, for the world on the cross has given you the greatest miracle of all, the forgiveness of our sins. Therefore, be glad and rejoice this day, dear people of God that the word has come to you even in spite of our 
shortcomings, our personal desires, our personal outlooks on what worship should be or, or not be. The church continues to sing the praises of God's word, to sing the praises of Christ, to, the, to deliver to you the kingdom that has no end. God bless you and keep you through his word, keep you in his kingdom now and forever. Amen. And now the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Uh, one other quick announcement uh, regarding uh, this, this video ministry. Uh, as the, the organ work is completed and as uh, pandemic uh, precautions are we're still in place, but uh, uh, the numbers are way down. Uh, the, the Board of Elders, working in conjunction with the Board of Trustees, uh, decided that it's, it's time. We're moving our worship life back to uh, this sanctuary. As such, uh, this video service will be a recording then of our regular Sunday morning things, just as it was uh, before the pandemic. What that means for you, especially our internet audience, is that this service will not be available uh, Sunday morning, but rather it will be a Sunday night or a Monday thing as our uh, video volunteers are able to, to process things and, and put them online for us. So just, uh, just a heads up, uh, that is the plan for this is to begin this next Sunday, February 14th. So uh, the, this video service uh, will still be available, uh, just will be a little bit later uh, in the day. So if you have enjoyed this as your church service on Sunday morning, uh, thank you for joining us for that. Uh, and you can continue to do so. We just won't have it available until later on Sunday. So just a heads up about that. Uh, and I mentioned about the organ work here already, and so let us pray now uh, to the Lord who has dealt bountifully with us. We give thanks to you, dear Father in heaven, for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh, that through him the gospel has been preached, casting out the works of Satan and the corruption of sin which we could not overcome. By your word, continue to rescue us from every evil of body and soul. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, creator of the world and its foundations, you hold might over the powers of nature and the rulers of the earth. Graciously preserve our land, its produce and industry, our leaders together with our people. Do not disregard us for our sins, but renew us that our lives may be peaceful and our country be governed according to your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, your Son is the great physician of body and soul, at whose hand demon, disease, and every ill effect of sin must turn away. We bring before you those in any need, those who are sick, those who are recovering from procedures or preparing for surgeries or treatments. In mercy, we pray that you would put an end to this pandemic that continues to afflict us, though uh, it is seemingly losing its grip. Grant relief to those who suffer and comfort all who mourn. Sustain all medical personnel and their laborers and cause your people to serve you in righteousness and holiness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, bless all honest and faithful labor, leisure and rest, the arts and culture of our people. Provide for all who are unemployed or underemployed. Take under your special protection those whose work is difficult or dangerous. And be with all who put their hands to any useful task. Give them the just rewards for their labor and the knowledge that their work is a blessing in your sight. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, our time is in your hands. Look with favor on those who celebrate birthdays this week. Grant that they may continue to grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness and bless them with your abiding love all their days. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, O Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, even Jesus Christ our Lord, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And receive our Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. That concludes our, our video service. Our, we're anticipating our final uh, video service uh, with uh, just me and the cameraman. Uh, we pray that uh, it's been a blessing to you, uh, as I mentioned before, and uh, pray that uh, you will continue to be blessed uh, even as we uh, return to, to corporate worship uh, here in the sanctuary. Go now in peace and serve the Lord.